was, was becoming available, so you didn't have to go pleading with your chief to give you a few pennies. People acquired more uh, uh, stance as individual productive scholars, and I think French presided beautifully over this kind of growth. Dr. French, in 1956, consolidated the, what we call the clinical laboratories into pathology and really was a visionary in that respect. Many of these uh, special types of laboratory functions were run by individual departments rather than the Department of Pathology. So at the time I was a student, uh, the blood bank was run by a surgeon. The microbiology laboratory was run uh, also by a surgeon, as a matter of fact, at that time. Uh, the, uh, what we now know as a clinical biochemistry laboratory was run by a professor of biological chemistry. In Jim French's era, what was important was he hired, I think, splendid people and, and let them take off. But he always had a superb, a dedicated, hardworking pathologist because he knew who they were. He knew they were bright and they knew they worked hard. By the time that French stepped down in 1979, the university had its eye on a successor. Peter Ward was a graduate of the medical school, comfortably ensconced at the University of Connecticut. When they brought Peter Ward here, he was a seasoned researcher himself, and uh, they gave him the, the mandate to establish uh, experimental pathology as part and parcel of the department, and that he did beautifully. There was no graduate program within the Department of Pathology. We put into place a PhD program, I think it was in the mid-1980s. The residency training program was relatively small. The department would, would admit about four residents per year. We've now doubled that number. University President Harold Shapiro's mission for Ward was to expand research, and over the next 25 years, that's exactly what he did. When Ward returned to the laboratory in 2005, the faculty had doubled from 50 to 100, and the research dollars had soared. It was $400,000 when I came here, and when I left, uh, when I stepped on from the uh, chair two years ago, uh, it was at about 14 million. He was able to uh, recruit the very best. He was able to nurture them, to mentor them, and they have become very, very successful during his tenure. Sounds like it would be uncommon, but we'll talk about esophageal cancer in the GI sequence. From Warthen to Weller, and from French to Ward and beyond, teaching continues to be the spine of pathology's mission at Michigan. It's really all about students and we're lucky here at Michigan because we have such great students so they really make it easy to teach because they, they want to learn this stuff. They're bright and they challenge you and they constantly stimulate you to to learn more so that you can stay maybe one step ahead of them. Over the years the University of Michigan has also produced some of the best known names in the field of pathology.
this is uh, what we have now. We have nests of um, these small malignant blue cells, and uh, it does show fairly extensive necrosis, but this was identical to what we saw on the uh, initial biopsy. Um, it had a very multi-nodular uh, growth pattern, including some nodules that were quite far away from the, uh, the yeah. other nodules, even separated by zones of, of skeletal muscle. I, I've never seen any histology like this. Is it possible, uh, Dr. Lucas, that that is some sort of strange treatment effect? That I think it would make sense. I mean, if the tumor is shrinking, I mean, these nodules could certainly shrink down and normal tissues could intercalate in between them. I mean, this thing shrunk considerably, she says, and shrunk in front of our eyes as well, both. So we, we have that confirmation. In our field, as I started to say, we think in order to be a sarcoma center, you have to have first an excellent pathologist who's experienced and is practiced in sarcomas. If you came to our tumor board, you would see that each case is presented by the clinician, someone like myself or Dr. Bierman, but then the, the radiologist and the pathologist together, and it's the interaction of the three. But of the three, the pathologist is the most important, has the final word. It's critical. Pathology is critical to this practice. Without that, we can't offer the patients the right treatment. We won't know what to do. I mean, it's essential. We're really that part of medicine that provides the diagnostic foundation that drives much of medical care. And that can't happen in isolation anymore. Never should have, I suppose, but most of our interactions historically have been with physicians. Historically, pathology was kind of the hidden specialty behind the curtain that had virtually no patient contact. Increasingly, we have hands-on experiences with patients. We have many more interactions by telephone, face-to-face -face with patients. And that's driven not only by personalized medicine, but patients' better understanding of their diagnoses, their diseases. It's a very, uh, very exciting, amazing time in pathology. Uh, we've seen the confluence of several things in basic science become applicable to what we do in pathology. And the big ones were, uh, first, the sequencing of the human genome. The biggest change is that if you go back just 10 years ago, people study genes um, pretty much at the individual level. And now we have the ability to look at all the genes and how active they are all at the same time in a, in a, in a tissue, in a patient's tissue, a tumor or other disease tissue. And that's a huge advance. As in the past, uh, pathology reports would take frequently a week or 10 days. Patients and the clinicians learned to expect that pathology took a long time. But I think in, in this day and age, we have a, a lot of automated instruments, like uh, automated stainers, that uh, really uh, make the turnaround time and the diagnostic accuracy uh, much better than it used to be. We can, on the spot, within half an hour, let the clinician know what exactly they are dealing with. In um, usual lumps and bumps that we see in the cancer center, this could assist the clinician to actually decide the whole plan of treatment on the spot, schedule the patients even for surgery. It eliminates the an anxiety of waiting a couple of days before they know what they are dealing with. The cancer center here with its leukemia lymphoma program is very strong. One of the attractive things about University of Michigan is that it would allow a person like myself who's interested in uh, taking information from the basic laboratory and applying it to ways where we can diagnose patients with hematologic cancers better. Michigan is really uniquely positioned to be successful in anatomic pathology. It's because of its heritage, but it's also because of its long-standing balanced strength in education research and clinical programs. The biggest changes in the department have been very major expansion of the number of residents in the program, as well as the number of clinical fellowships, which include fellowships in surgical pathology, pulmonary pathology, GI pathology, hematopathology, cytopathology, and dermatopathology. On a typical day in pathology, one of our residents will be doing a frozen section on an unusual bone sarcoma, uh, an interesting 